Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. It is one o'clock, so we are going to get started. The title of today's presentation is Insurance Savings for Smoke-Free Housing, an Overview of Market Research. This is brought to you by Live Smoke Free. My name is Lindsay Smith, and I'm going to be your moderator today. We have three great panelists who I'll introduce in just a minute. We have a couple of housekeeping items before we get started today. There's a few ways to communicate with us. If you need help with something, you have the option to do a virtual hand raise. If you're having some kind of technical glitch um, or you just need something else that comes to mind, raise your hand and I will send you a direct chat in the chat box. A couple other ways to interact with us is that we're actually going to do just a couple of polls right at the beginning here just to get an idea of who's on with us this afternoon. And then if you have a question at any time during the presentation about something you heard, about something that prompted a question that you'd like to make sure our panelists answer, type it into the Q&A box. And we will either get that answered during the presentation or we do have some dedicated time at the end to get all of your questions answered. So be sure to take advantage of those things. We also wanted to let you know that we are recording today's webinar, and so that is going to be available very soon at the link on the screen, mnsmokefreehousing.org. So you're welcome to view this presentation a second time, share it with someone else that you think would benefit from the information. Um, that'll be available to you very soon. I am going to take this opportunity to launch the first poll so we're interested to know who is with us today. Who's joining us this afternoon? Are you a property owner or manager? Are you a renter, public health professional, insurance professional, or would you put yourself in the other category? Take just another few seconds to respond to that. And I'll close out our poll so you all can see the results. I know there are still a few people joining us. I'm gonna end the poll, share the results with you. So it looks like we have quite a number of public health professionals with us and a few insurance professionals, a couple of folks that consider themselves other. I have one other poll just again to get an idea of who is with us. We'd also like to know what part of the United States you're located. Are you in the Northeast, the Midwest, Southwest, or not in the United States at all? If you're just joining us, we have just opened a poll. If you'd take a second to give us a response to that. I will be closing it in just another few seconds. We've got some great Midwest representation, but it's super exciting to see folks joining us from all over the country. Thanks for being here this afternoon. I am going to share the results with you. So that's what I was just talking about. Now you can see it. This is who we have with us today. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us. We hope that you get a lot of great information today and that this spurs some good questions for you. I'm gonna close those. Again, if you have questions that pop up throughout the presentation, please feel free to click the Q&A icon on your screen and type in a question. We will make sure to get that answered before the end of the presentation. And if you need help with something, for those of, us, those of you who have just joined us, you should have the option to raise your hand virtually. If you need help with something, go ahead and raise your hand and I will send you a direct chat um, to make sure you have what you need. With that, I'd like to introduce our panelists. They are Jackie Seward, the Assistant Program Director from the Live Smoke Free Program. Also Liz Corey, Student Consultant and MPH Candidate at the University of Minnesota. 
and also Vicki Lundin, who is a commercial loss control specialist with American Family Insurance, and they will all give a much better introduction of themselves when they get to their portion of the presentation. First up is Jackie Stewart. Jackie, you are unmuted, so go ahead and start your portion of today's presentation. Thank you, Lindsay, and thank you to everyone who's joining us today. Uh, my name is Jackie Seward. I am the Assistant Program Director for Live Smoke Free. Uh, we are a program of the Association for Non-Smokers Minnesota, and our goal is to promote smoke-free housing and provide technical assistance to property owners, managers, renters, and other stakeholders in both Minnesota and nationally. And we do that by educating, by um, assisting property owners and managers to adopt smoke-free policies, help them maintain those policies, and then we also work with renters who are experiencing secondhand smoke uh, issues in their apartment. Um, this particular project, the in, uh, Insurance Market Research Project, uh, was supported by the University of Minnesota's Community Health Initiative. Next slide, please. Uh, Live Smoke Free can offer a number of free resources, including uh, consultations and presentations, promotions for smoke-free buildings. Uh, we also have a number, a number of sample implementation materials, including surveys, uh, letters, policy language. We've got uh, a lot of educational resources, and we can also provide linkages to cessation resources. Now, we do uh, provide most of our assistance in uh, the state of Minnesota, but we can provide some national assistance as well. Our website is mnsmokefreehousing.org, and there you will find lots of other resources and ways to connect with us. Next slide. So before we get into the main um, part of our uh, webinar today. I want to do a quick review of secondhand smoke. As most of you probably know, it's very harmful. It contains over 7,000 chemicals. Many of those are toxic. Um, in adults, it can cause cancer, stroke, and heart disease. Um, in kids, it can cause asthma attacks, respiratory infections, ear infections, sudden infant death syndrome. Uh, the U.S. Surgeon General has warned that there is no risk-free level of exposure to secondhand smoke. So if you are smelling that smoke, that means that you're breathing in those toxic chemicals and your health is at risk. Um, now, the problem in housing is that in a multi-unit building, air and smoke can easily transfer from one unit to the next. So if one person is smoking, it really affects everyone else who lives and works in the building. Um, a, recent, a recent study found that nearly 40% of Americans living in apartments are exposed to secondhand smoke. Next slide. So there are a number of benefits of smoke-free housing and adopting a smoke-free policy. One is that uh, it's a much healthier place um, for everyone who lives there, the people who work there, visitors, uh, and even pets. Um, so when you have a smoke-free policy in place, it really helps to ensure that there is no smoke in the building and that everybody has better access to breathing uh, clean air in their homes. Uh, another benefit to a smoke-free policy is that it helps keep the building much cleaner, and also um, for that reason, it helps keep costs down. Um, as you can see in that photo in the middle, um, it takes a lot of time and a lot of money to clean up a unit that looks like that, um, so there are a lot of savings involved there as well. Um, a third benefit of a smoke-free policy is that it is, makes the building safer uh, due to the reduced fire risk. And I'm gonna go uh, into that a little bit more on the next slide, so go ahead and advance. So in 2017, the national fire loss from residential fires was $7.9 billion, uh, and national fire deaths due to careless smoking were at 14%. Uh, in Minnesota here, um, uh, careless smoking has consistently been the number one cause of fire death in our state at 16%. Um, next slide, please. So with all of this 
potential loss involved with allowing smoking inside a, a building. At Live Smoke Free, we were wondering, are insurance providers offering discounts or incentives for property owners that have a smoke-free policy in place? Um, and a quick search told us that the answer was yes, but we really wanted to look a lot deeper into this question. And so that is where uh, Liz Corey comes in from the University of Minnesota. Next slide, please. And uh, with that, I will pass it over to Liz. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Liz Corey, and I'm a first year maternal and child health master's of public health student at the University of Minnesota. Um, in my second semester, I was placed with Live Smoke Free through CHI, the Office of Community and Economic Business Development through the university. And the goal is to provide support to nonprofits to work on identified public health projects by placing graduate students into different um, consulting positions that can range from anywhere from 60 to 80 hours per semester. So I completed this project in the fall of 2018. This consulting project was primarily research-based and Jackie and I worked together to come up with the goals for this project, including gathering information. Oh, sorry, could you advance the slide? My mistake. Thank you. Um, to gather information on insurance cost savings, both for property owners and renters associated with smoke-free housing through online research and telephone interviews with insurance agents and company representatives. At the end of the project, the goal was to write a report detailing the method of research and the findings and a brief review of the literature to supplement the report on housing policies if needed and if time allows. And I have some information and if anyone is interested on that and that literature review, I'm happy to share that as well. Another goal was to create infographics and some content that can be shared incorporating the benefits of smoke-free buildings to go to the audiences of insurance agents and policymakers. Next slide, please. So the initial research was based on what Live Smoke Free had already known coming into this project, which was that Capital Insurance Group, which I refer to as CIG, so if I say that, that's what I'm referring to, did offer a discount for smoke-free housing. So I initially started looking into the topic with that as being my sort of jumping off point. And I quickly found out that what was happening was an interesting sort of feedback loop where different um, smoke-free housing organizations were citing each other who were citing CIG and while they do offer a smoke-free discount it's limited to the western and pacific northwestern states that capital insurance group is licensed to provide services in so that and we thought that that was going to be a national program turned out it wasn't and then with some other research of just some quick internet searches I found that there wasn't really a lot of information out there on smoke-free discounts for either renters or landlords so I progressed into doing telephone interviews with insurance companies and agents. I contacted 34 companies in total. A lot of them were national carriers, but quite a few were local agents that worked with many different carriers as well. And I asked a few questions about if the company offered a discount, why or why not, and if the discounts varied for renters and landlords. During these telephone interviews, the vast majority of people that I spoke with were unsure of if the company offered a discount, which I found to be a really interesting finding. Instead of getting that straightforward no, a lot of I don't know or I've never heard of that, and I was referred to speak back to local agents, which it came up later when I talked to local agents that they referred me back to corporate. So there was another feedback loop involved in there. Most of the companies I spoke with did offer both rental and landlord's insurance. And if they had a discount for being smoke-free and living in a smoke-free housing, it was almost exclusively for private homeowners insurance. So they didn't, there was not really much offered at all for renters and landlords, but private homeowners insurance, almost every company had a smoke-free discount. Another finding that I heard quite often was that a lot of the insurance agents would say, we just assume that buildings are smoke-free. Um, next slide, please. So we did find out that there was a discount offered at Farmers Insurance for Renters Insurance. And some agents and companies that I spoke to were open to the idea of offering a discount, but stated it would ultimately be a corporate decision. So that was a decision that would need to come down from higher up in the insurance company, that if they were gonna offer a discount for who and for how much and all that sort of logistical nitty gritty. Um, next slide, please. I've included a few quotes throughout my section of the presentation on some responses that I got in these telephone interviews. Um, 
And these are some of the ones from those initial telephone interviews. So again, some I don't knows, assuming the building is smoke-free. I've never been asked that before and I've never had a smoke-free building I found to be very interesting in that people are just not asking insurance agents if they have a discount if they are living in a building that's smoke-free. And then the last quote on this slide is that they deal with about seven or eight different insurance companies, but it never really comes up. So depending on the carrier that each agent is licensed to work with, they can, and underwriters, it gets really, really complicated. And it's hard, it was hard for them to say specifically one way or the other because they are working with such a wide range of carriers. Next slide, please. These are just some additional quotes. Um, I found the first one interesting because it mentioned underwriters. So in this conversation, we discussed how anything that a landlord does to reduce the risk to their housing could be eligible for a discount, but sometimes the discounts are not explicitly clear. So asking in conversation if there's a discount or sharing that you have a smoke-free building can sometimes lead to a discount, but it isn't a discount in this company at least that's sort of the front of the line, a checkbox when you go through initially setting up a policy. Um, next slide, please. So after finding out that the CIG feed, feedback loop was happening and talking to agents who were providing a lot of I don't knows and assuming that buildings are all smoke free, we realized that there seemed to be a need for some more education on where smoking is allowed and where smoking isn't allowed. And in conversation with Jackie, we redeveloped the project a bit to try to get more information even from local agents specifically. So I developed an electronic survey and sent it to 190 agents. And last time I checked, I had four electronic responses, two emails, and three calls. And I think we ended up with a few more in each of those categories. But the best conversations to come out of the survey responses were from agents who called me directly or emailed to provide information. And that was how we ended up finding out about the discount at American Family Insurance, which we explored more for the purpose of this project. But I'll share a little bit of information on some survey questions. If we could go to the next slide, please. So in, in, out of the interest of trying to learn more about education of where smoking is allowed and not allowed, I included some questions about the awareness and knowledge of where it's legal to smoke in Minnesota and where it's illegal to smoke in Minnesota. We were interested to see how many agents had the experience of processing a claim for a fire caused by cigarette smoking. We asked some risk attitude questions, such as um, the fourth is it is less risky to insure smoke-free buildings than to insure buildings where smoking is permitted. And we asked the question, does your company offer discounts? What concerns do you have about smoke-free housing? And a few others, just to sort of get some baseline data on what agents are aware of within the Twin Cities. And I should mention, I only sent the survey to agents in Minnesota, and it was primarily in the metro area. Um, next slide, please. So the survey gave us some interesting results that most agreed it was less risky to insure a smoke-free building, which we probably could have assumed. Um, all agreed that smoke-free buildings would benefit resident health. Some were unsure if their company offered a discount for smoke-free policies. So again, that theme of being unsure if that discount is even offered came up again. And then enforcing a smoke-free policy was the greatest concern about offering a discount. And next slide, please. And these are some quotes from those phone conversations that I had with people who called in and also a few electronic, but primarily these are from more of those richer conversations with agents directly. Um, the first was very interesting in that they said that they didn't offer any discounts because there are fire systems in place. And um, we just found that to be so fascinating in that a lot of buildings, especially older buildings, don't have a fire suppression system, or they might have a sprinkler system, but having a sprinkler system does not equate having no risk for a fire. There can still be fire that causes structural damage and loss and also loss of life. And the second bullet quote on here, if you don't have a smoke-free sign outside your building, no one will insure you. And that didn't necessarily seem to be accurate um, from what we know about insurance companies agreeing to insure buildings with smoking, but of course people need to be, landlords need to be adhering to laws about not smoking outside of within 20 feet of the door because that's a law in Minnesota, but there are not really legislation dictating who can or cannot insure people who have buildings where smoking is allowed. 
Um, next slide, please. So this just really was building on that scene that was emerging, that there was some sort of disconnect or misunderstanding that a fire suppression system protects the building entirely. And in the Twin Cities, especially, I'm a student, so I live in the university neighborhood, and a lot of the buildings are really old and haven't been updated to have these fully protected systems. So I just found that the assumption that buildings do have sprinklers and that that's mandated to be really pervasive and that could be influencing some of the lack of the smoke-free discount we're seeing here if agents are assuming that all buildings are smoke-free or all buildings are protected from risks through these fire suppression systems. Next slide, please. So after, through, after that extensive research and connecting with many agents representing a lot of different carriers, we did connect with American Family Insurance and discuss the discount they offered. We got this quote from American Family to help us promote smoke-free housing. So the quote is from Bill Loring, a loss control manager in com for commercial farm and ranch insurance through American Family. And he stated, American Family Insurance gladly offers discounts for smoke-free multi-unit housing. We agree that non-smoking buildings will result in far less fires, which could result in property damage, injury, or worse, loss of life. By incentivizing smoke-free policies, we believe there are considerable loss savings to be had as a result, as well as decreased potential for loss of life, not to mention better quality of health for occupants due to the decreased exposure to secondhand smoke. And when we, when we first talked to Bill about this, we were absolutely thrilled that he mentioned the health of occupants, as that was not something that came up in conversation with agents that I was having whatsoever until this conversation. So with that, I'll pass it over to Vicki, who is a commercial farm and ranch loss control specialist with American Family that will speak more about the discount that they offer. And next slide, please. Hello, everyone. I am Vicki Lendine, and I am a commercial farm ranch loss control specialist with American Family. Next slide. Today, I will be talking about why having a smoke-free rental property is important and why we offer a smoke-free discount. Next slide. We have data according to National Fire Protection Association News and Research. And for those of you who are not familiar with NFPA, NFPA is a United States Trade Association that creates and maintains standards and codes that are adapted by local governments. With this information, we have from 2012 to 2016 that there was an estimated annual average of 18,100 reported home structure fires started by smoking materials that killed an average of 590 people per year, injured 1,130 per year, and caused 476 million in direct property damage per year. And when I refer to smoking materials, that includes cigarettes, pipes, and cigars. One in 20 homes, structure fires were started by these smoking materials. These fires cause almost one in four, four home fire deaths and one in 10 home fire injuries. Smoking is the leading cause of home fire deaths with an overall one of every 31 home smoking material fires resulted in death. The leading origin for home smoking fires from the 2012 to 2016 era was an exterior balcony or porch and a deck would be included in that. 43% of those deaths were caused by fires that were started in a living room and one third were caused by fires that began in a bedroom. Next slide. We have a breakdown of leading areas of origin in home structure fires started by smoking materials from 1980 to 1984, and then in 2012 and 2016. So you see in 1980 to 1984, on an exterior balcony or unenclosed porch, there's only about 1% home structure fires, whereas in 2012 to 2016, there was about 18%. If you go down to the bedroom, in 1984 to, or 1980 to 1984, we had about 39%, and then about 15% for 2012 and 2016. The living room 
1980 to 84 is about 28% and then about 7% from 2012 to 2016. With these first three, you can see that there's quite a range of increase and decreases here. And the, the reason for that is due to the increased bans of indoor smoking. So in the 80s, you had more smoking related fires in the bedroom and living room versus you did on the balcony or a porch. Where now where we have the, some bans in place, there's gonna be more fires on those porches. And then if we go down the list for courtyard, terrace and patio, it's zero and 6% for this time range. Unclassified outside area, zero and 6% again. An exterior wall, 1% in the 1980 to 84 range and then 5% in 2012 to 2016. Kitchen or cooking fires, 7% in the 80 to 84, 5% in the 2012 to 2016. Garage or vehicle storage, 2% in the 80 to 84, uh, and 4% in the 2012 to 2016. Bathroom or lavatory, we have 3% for 1980 to 1984 and 4% for the 2012, 2016. And then exterior stairs, there was 0% for the 1980 to 84, 4% for 2012 to 2016. And then there's also been home fires and trash and rubbish shoots, 3% in 1980 and then 4% in 2012. Next slide, please. We have had previous smoking related losses caused from careless smoking in bed, people throwing cigarette butts from balconies, porches, and decks, and people just not using ashtrays for their cigarette disposal. And with that, not properly disposing their cigarettes, they would also throw their cigarette butts into mulch around buildings, which could set that building on fire. We have seen for every $1 of direct claim loss cost paid can result in $3, even up to $8 of indirect cost that insured pays out of pocket, which could be loss of rent. Next slide, please. At American Family, we do offer a smoke-free discount. There are two types of properties that are eligible for the discount. One is a smoke-free property where smoking is prohibited on the entire premises and a smoke-free property that has designated smoking areas. And a designated smoking area must be 20 feet from the building to prevent a spread of fire. And there also must be signs indicating smoking areas and smoke-free areas. To be eligible for this discount, there will, be, there will need to be a smoke-free policy. And then, a, and then that policy must be documented. So to qualify for the discount, the documentation either has to be a smoke-free policy in the bylaws of an association or within the lease agreement of a rental property. And if there's changes to the policy in regards to the smoking applied midterm, the discount will be added effective the date of the change. If it's removed midterm, the discount will remain on the policy until renewed. Next slide. Our smoke-free discount will reduce fire perils by five to 15% depending on the risk. For our condo association and bed and breakfast, we have a 15% smoke-free discount if the entire property is smoke-free and 10% if there's a designated smoking area. For our rental dwellings and apartment buildings, if the whole property is smoke-free, we, we offer a 10% discount and a 5% discount if there's a designated smoking area. And then for condo units and other habitational risk, if it's a smoke-free property, we offer a 10% discount. And then if there's a designated smoking area, a 5% discount. And with the smoke-free discount, we do offer a discount on content. Um, for the condo association, bed and breakfast, it's gonna be 3% if it's smoke-free, 2% if it's a designated area, 
rental dwellings and apartment buildings, 2% if it's a small free property, and a 1% if there's a designated area. And on our condo unit rentals and other habitational risks, we will offer a 2% smoke-free discount for contents on a smoke-free property and a 1% for a designated smoking area. Next slide. Thank you. All right, this is, this is Jackie again, and I'm just gonna um, wrap things up with a few recommendations before we move into our question and answer period. Um, a recommendation for property owners and managers, uh, contact your insurance agent to tell them that your property is now smoke-free, um, or maybe it has been smoke-free, um, and ask them if they offer any kinds of discounts or savings uh, for that policy. Even if they don't offer a specific discount, you may still be able to negotiate a better rate based on uh, that information that your building is smoke-free. Um, the recommendation for insurance providers, find out if your company offers a smoke-free discount for either landlords or renters insurance and reward your customers for healthier, cleaner, and safer housing. Uh, for public health advocates, uh, spread the word, inform landlords and renters in your area of the potential for insurance savings for smoke-free housing. Um, to help you do that, we have created a little flyer that's pictured on the slide that we will send out after the webinar uh, that just kind of goes over some of the highlights from today's webinar. Next slide, please. As a reminder, we have lots of smoke-free housing resources on our website at mnsmokefreehousing.org, so uh, feel free to check that out. Next slide, please. This is the contact information for Live Smoke Free, so I encourage you to get in touch with us if you have any questions um, about smoke-free housing or about this webinar, um, and uh, we'd be happy to, to chat with you further. Next slide, please. Um, we can now move into the Q&A. Um, we've also got contact information for all three of our presenters here. Um, so feel free to reach out if you have any questions for us after the webinar. And Lindsay, I will pass it over to you to help us with some of the Q&A. Definitely, we already have a couple of questions for our panelists. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute all three of you just so you know there's background noise. Um, the first question I'm going to start with is from Evelyn. I believe this is a good question for Vicki. Um, Evelyn asked, do you think the increase in exterior fires is related to the increase in smoke-free policies between 2012 and 2016? Policies that may not have been in place in the 80s? Um. There could be, just because if the policy didn't state to smoke 20 feet from the building, yes, it's, it's potential for the building to catch on fire. Okay, so perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> Seems reasonable, perhaps. Okay. Um, another question from Ron is is it necessary for insurance companies to get permission from state insurance regulators before offering specific discounts like one for a non-smoking building that one i'm not going to be able to answer because i don't know the information on that jackie do you happen to have information on that I, I do not know the answer to that question, but we can do a little bit of follow-up and, and get back in touch with Ron if we find out um, the answer. Okay, really great question, Ron. Thank you for adding that. We also have two questions that are really, I believe, asking the same thing. The question is if American Family Insurance is nationwide, so is, is that insurance group available across the United States? We are not nationwide right now. Um, we are in about, I think it's 13 to 14 states right now. But we do have um, other affiliates within our organization that are in other states. Okay. Thank you, Vicki. 
so Vicki, can I ask a follow up on that? So um, if it, you said you have affiliates in other states, so does that mean that uh, that people in those states could still possibly access the discount? Actually, we ha we are in 19 states. Okay. Okay. Another question, let's see, from Vanessa. Are the American Family discounts available to properties in all of the, lo the 19 locations or states or just in Minnesota? I believe it's available in all 19 states. Okay, great. Thanks for the question, Vanessa. Uh, sorry, I'm looking for, continue to add your questions either to the, to the Q&A piece or in the chat box. We're getting a lot of good stuff here. Lynn asks, or kind of states and then asks, I've been able to get a discount from State Farm, but it may be because we also require renter's insurance. Do you know anything about their policy? maybe to live? Yeah, yeah. So with State Farm, they do offer a discount for renter's insurance for living in a smoke-free building. And I think that in their in conversation with them, that is one of the companies that doesn't have a spelled out discount and percentage discount amount like American Family has, but they are willing to offer that discount if landlords ask for it and in tandem with some of those other risk reduction measures like requiring renters insurance from what I understand um, and I can provide some information Lynn if you would like on um, to the specific State Farm agents that I was able to connect with who could maybe speak to that a little bit more. Great thank you Liz. I also have a comment from Kevin um, he wrote in the rates attributable to smoking materials. I think this is in reference to Vicki's portion of the presentation. The rates attributable to smoking materials is a potentially large underestimate. Many causes of fires are unknown, and some, perhaps many, of these are smoking materials. Vicki, okay, do you. Smoking materials are cigarettes, pipes, and cigars. And the data that we have is from the NFPA, the National Fire Protection Association. Okay. And I can add on to that. I um, can kind of just underscore what Kevin says that, yeah, I have also heard that um, in a lot of cases, they're really just unable to determine the cause of a fire. So it is very possible that the estimates that we've shared in this um, presentation are, are, are underestimates of how many fires are actually caused by smoking materials. Very interesting. Okay. Thanks, Jackie. Mm -hmm. I let's see. I'm trying to see if there are any remaining questions. I don't think there are any currently. I encourage anyone that has a lingering question, we still have time for you to submit. If you have something that you want to ask the panelists. Oh, another one came in from Jennifer. Thanks, Jennifer. When a smoke-free policy is given to the agent to prove they have a smoke-free policy, does it need to include marijuana and e-cigarettes? I'll leave that to any of the panelists to jump in. Vicki, do you have an answer to that for the for American Family specifically? Well, I know that there's some debate right now on the e-cigarettes just because they do not, they're not a fire hazard. There are hazards with like batteries blowing up and, and things like that, or the batteries being on a charger. But it, yeah, it's still in debates on how property managers are gonna handle the e-cig. And as far as the marijuana, I'm not sure how I can that's speak a bit to that. Um, throughout the research, marijuana came up a couple of times in that, and same with e-cigs, and that there isn't a lot of research around e-cigs at the moment, so that's sort of in a gray area. And there were some questions from at least one agent, I can't remember what company they were exactly from, but the legality of 
in states where marijuana is legal, the legality of prohibiting smoking of marijuana in someone's home. So I think that's an area that we'll see a lot of like legislation proposed soon probably and that something that hasn't totally been addressed from the smoke-free housing standpoint, but I think that'll be one of the next directions that the sort of policy work will have to take. Mm -hmm. Jackie, do you have anything that you'd like to add to that question? Um, I would just say that, you know, we, a lot of the smoke-free policies that we um, see here at Live Smoke Free and, and also in the policy language that we supply to property owners and managers, the definition of smoking is written to include e-cigarettes and also it's written in a way that would also address marijuana. Um, in Minnesota, we, uh, we have... Um, uh, medical marijuana, uh, but we do not allow recreational use of marijuana. But um, fortunately, that definition, should that law change, will still cover properties um, uh, for marijuana in their smoke-free policies. So hopefully that's something that's being included in a lot of policies um, already. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks to everybody for that one. That was a great question, Jennifer. Thanks for asking it. Um, while I just leave a little bit of additional space, if there are other questions to be asked, um, something that I'd love to hear from the panel is if a manager wants to approach an insurance provider about a discount or a credit, how might they go about that? That might be a good question for Vicki or maybe Liz from your research too. Sure, yeah. Um, so in conversation, then I think that the um, sheet that Jackie developed is really great to get the word out. It's really just as simple as speaking with an agent and asking if they offer a discount because they do have a lot of flexibility in the underwriters that they work with. So it just is a form of self-advocacy, I suppose. So saying, I have a smoke-free policy, can you offer a discount? And as Jackie mentioned, negotiating to say, well, I know that the American Family does offer a discount, so I might go there and then see if they can offer a discount. It just is a lot of that one-on-one -on -one conversation with your agent. Okay, great. Vicki, do you have anything to add to that? I agree with that. Just contact your agent and start talking about the smoke-free discount and they can chat with their underwriter and work something out with the insured. Mm -hmm. Great. It's all about just asking. <laughs> so that's excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, a couple more things have come in. One is just a comment from Rose. Um, she writes, in her work with fire departments, firefighters and fire department admin staff also say that a lot of fire causes are undetermined and may or may not have been started by smoking materials. So kind of going back to that earlier thread we were talking about, um, that's been Rose's experience in working with fire departments also. Um, a question for Vicki. Sarah wants to know, why are there varying discount rates for different property types? So for example, condos versus apartments. Why do the discount rates vary a little bit? Um, I believe it's gonna be due to the, the risk of it. You know, with a rental dwelling, you're gonna have more units, more people, um, versus with a condo association and bed and breakfast. I'm going to estimate that is what I think the answer is. Okay. Okay. That's like an underwriting question. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Good question, Kira. Thanks, Vicki. Um, another question came in from Cecilia, I believe in reference to the previous question about marijuana and e-cigarettes kind of related to this. Cecilia wants to know if there's any discussion around third-hand smoke, um, or maybe this kind of has to do with um, where fires are starting, or is there any conversation just in general about third-hand smoke and any of these discounts or the risks, or uh, maybe Jackie in general with what Live Smoke Free works on? Sure, I can talk a little bit about third-hand smoke for those who um, haven't heard of this before. So third-hand smoke refers to the smoke that's kind of left over after the smoking has occurred. So it it, um, it gets, you know, into the walls and it gets into carpeting and upholstery and all, 
you know, basically any surface in the home can be contaminated by third hand smoke. It's those chemicals as they kind of settle um, onto those surfaces. And it can be especially um, risky for um, homes that have children in them who are likely to maybe put things in their mouths that they aren't supposed to and they can ingest third hand smoke that way. Same thing goes for pets. Um, I don't know if the topic of third hand smoke came up um, during the uh, research, but um, Liz, did you hear anything about third hand smoke come up in, in any of your work? I really didn't, no. I imagine that third-hand smoke would probably be something that landlords would be more concerned about, as you mentioned, with cleaning units for like the next resident and um, how it could stick around for a while. But in terms of risk to buildings, it didn't come up at all. Okay, thank you both. Um, another question that I have for anyone is where do you see with with all that you have worked on, Liz, with your research, and Jackie with Live Smoke Free, and Vicki, what you're working on, where do you see opportunities for promoting perhaps smoke free incentives within insurance agencies? How might we move this forward? What would be the incentives for insurance agencies with this? Well, I would think a lot of word of mouth just to get it out there that, hey, there are smoke-free discounts offered. And I don't know if that'd be a brochure sent to homeowners, building owners, things like that. Okay. And I think, as I had touched on in my section of the presentation, just doing some more education outreach on the fact that smoking is still allowed indoors and the use of information on the prevalence of people that report smoking inside, because it seems like a lot of agents just aren't entirely aware of the fact that that's still somewhat common um, mm -hmm. and that that might be able to sort of shift the tide back to, you know, there was a lot of really wonderful anti-smoking rhetoric that happened in the last couple of decades. So I think that we have a cultural understanding that smoking isn't happening inside because everyone knows it's not good for you and it's dangerous, but that in practice, there are still buildings that allow smoking and smoking is still happening and that smoking indoors is the number one cause of fire fatalities in Minnesota. And I think that for agents especially, looking at some of the bottom line numbers of the cost in terms of damage and loss, that could be a really impactful data point to be promoting a smoke-free discount. Mm -hmm. I will just add on um, to this one as well and just say that I think that we have a really great opportunity in the public health field to work with insurance agencies who are offering these discounts and we can kind of help each other. It's, it's a win-win for both of us to, uh, to promote smoke-free discounts uh, for, for smoke-free properties. So I think there's a lot of opportunity um, moving forward. For sure, great. One additional question, what are the best tools to track if tenants are not smoking in the property? So I'll jump in on that one right away. So this is one of the biggest questions that we um, receive at Live Smoke Free with regards to how do you um, how do you enforce a smoke-free policy? How do you work on compliance and, and make sure that tenants are actually following the policy? And there are a number of strategies um, that we recommend. Um, for example, making sure you have signage in the building and on the property, making sure that you're um, regularly communicating uh, with residents and um, things along those lines. So um, Live Smoke Free has a lot of these resources to help with compliance and enforcement on our website, uh, www.mnsmokefreehousing.org. Um, so you could start there if you're looking for tips. Otherwise, if you, um, if you have you know, a specific um, circumstance in your building that you're interested in chatting about and you're looking for other strategies, you're welcome to drop us a line um, and we can hopefully provide you with some suggestions. Great, thanks Jackie. One more question for Jackie. Earlier in your part of the presentation, you showed a slide that quoted percentages of fire deaths. Mm -hmm. um, David missed that slide and wondered if you could restate what that percentage was. Sure, I believe that it was 16% of all of our um, fire deaths nationally were caused by careless smoking. Uh, and in Minnesota, that percentage was 14%. Great, thank you. Um, and for everyone, 
on the webinar, we will be, or we are recording this session. And so this will be available to you soon on the website that's on the screen right now. We will also be providing the PowerPoint slides. So if you logged in a little bit late, you will have every opportunity to review all of this information again and see all of the information that's been on the slides today. All right. With no additional questions, I think I'd like to just open it up once more to our panelists to say if there's anything additional that you'd like to leave the audience with, is there any final take home message um, from today's session? Maybe well, we'll start with Jackie. The owners definitely have an advantage with a smoke free policy for their properties. Definitely an advantage is what you said, Vicki. Definitely. Yep. Great. Um, this is Jackie, and I think that, uh, you know, my take home would be to just spread the word with property owners and managers to, to call their insurance agent, ask the question, find out if there is a discount. I mean, there are so many benefits to having a smoke-free policy, and this is another really great one that I think some property owners might be missing out on. So um, spread the word and um, get property owners to to look into this a little bit further. Um, I'd also um, want to mention, just going back to that last question um, about enforcement, um, Live Smoke Free is currently working on a compliance and enforcement toolkit. Um, so we will also have that available uh, through our website uh, relatively soon. So stay tuned for that as well. Great, uh, thanks Jackie. Anything from Liv? Yeah, yeah, so I think my takeaway is just to be aware when creating health communications messaging that agents definitely have the interest of their residents in mind. As I mentioned, I heard from several agents who would be really, op really open to offering a discount, but it seems like the extent of smoking indoors is just not very well known. So I think that informs a bit of some of the outreach work that smoke-free housing advocates can engage in a little bit more, especially with, as was mentioned, marijuana and e-cigarettes. And as smoking indoors changes in terms of what people are, what habits people are engaging in. I think that having advocacy be really responsive to that will be really crucial to getting more insurance agents on board and having larger community conversations around the dangers of secondhand smoking and smoking inside. Most definitely. All right, great final words of wisdom and encouragement. Thank you, Jackie and Liz and Vicki um, for everything that you shared today. I hope that everyone on the call has received a lot of great information. Thank you so much for your great questions. I think this has been a great discussion. Um, a final time, you see all of the contact information for our three panelists here on the screen and the Live Smoke Free website as well. So go to any of those, contact any of our panelists for any follow-up questions you have or information you'd like. And with that, I'm going to end our webinar and again say thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.